This is an oven controlled crystal oscillator, OCXO. I've had it uh, powered on now for about an hour and it is drawing uh, 0.2 amps, 200 milliamps of current. That's the amount of current it draws when the, when the temperature is stable. It has reached its uh, hot temperature. It would be hot to the touch, but I'm not going to touch it. Um, the uh, OCXO is normally switched on through a relay, but that relay is bypassed here using a, a jumper, a pin header jumper. Also on this uh, little control board, there is a potentiometer, a 100K uh, trimmer, and um, that is uh, functioning as a voltage divider. The voltage um, is, is, supply, is biasing this uh, VREF um, pin of the OCXO, which is the fine tuning of frequency in the OCXO. And I have already uh, tuned it, um, uh, basically, um, and it should be very close to 10 megahertz when we test it. So we'll go back to the frequency counter, which is in uh, GPS mode. It's connected to the GPS, which is over here, and uh, you can see that the, the green LED on the GPS is flashing. That indicates uh, that the GPS has a satellite fix. And also, um, this LED on the frequency counter would be either always on or always off if it did not have a satellite fix, but it has a fix, and so it's uh, it's going, uh, it's alternating on and off for four seconds of each half cycle. So I'll press the button and do a measurement of the OCXO, and... Um, it is um, 10 megahertz exactly. Um, in, it's not surprising to me, it was at first, but now that I've had uh, time to look at it over, uh, over several days, it's, um, it's just amazingly stable uh, once it comes to temperature. And uh, we can uh, use the OCXO as an alternative to the GPS as a time base for measuring other oscillator outputs. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do at this point is disconnect the OCXO's uh, output from the uh, frequency counter input and substitute another oscillator, which I'll tell you in a moment what that is. Okay, that's a VFO, which is tuned to 7,040 7, kilohertz. Of course, that's an imprecise frequency. That's the nearest 100 hertz. And um, we will take the same measurement with the GPS again uh, to see what the frequency of that oscillator is. So I'll press the button. And that turns out to be 7039994 hertz. I'll write 9949, although I'll probably remember that it's 6 hertz shy of the uh, dialed frequency. Now what I want to do is disconnect the um, GPS and substitute um, substitute this um, OCXO. So let me unplug the output from the OCXO and uh, use this adapter right here to connect it to the frequency counter's time base input. We'll unplug the GPS. And we'll flip this to 10 megahertz. That's the it was the, the toggle switch was in the one hertz position, and now it's in the 10 megahertz position. And uh, we should get um, 
the LED should begin to go uh, for four seconds on and four seconds off the same as it does with the GPS connected and now I push the button so we're measuring the VFO frequency using the OCXO as a time base and it comes out to be exactly the same 6 Hertz shy of uh, 7040 um, that's uh, well that's what it's supposed to be because this this is a very precise time base it's not as good as the GPS the GPS is, is orders of magnitude better but this is still a very very good time base if you don't have a GPS and if it's being calibrated so now I want to do something a little uh, whimsical maybe um, I'm going to substitute a time base that is not um, not as precise. In fact, uh, it could it's nowhere near nearly so. This this is this little circuit here. This little oscillator is what I call uh, a kitchen clock. Um, the crystal is thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight hertz, uh, which is a very low frequency uh, compared to ten megahertz. And uh, so that uh, frequency is being divided uh, by 2 to the 15th, which you recognize, 32, 768 is 2 to the 15th. Um, this chip here divides by 2 to the 12th, and then we divide it by 8 over here using uh, three flip-flops. I could also use another one of these uh, 4040 chips for the same purpose. But um, so what, what we have here is divided by... Uh, 2 to the 15th, and then I have a a buffer, a non-inverting buffer here, which is irrelevant. And um, the output, oh, the power supply is independent. I should point that out. It's getting powered separately. It's not getting powered from, it will not be powered from the frequency counter. Now I'm going to unplug the um, OCXO, and um, I will... A, whoops, this is the wrong, the wrong connector. Let me take this off. Unplug, unplug the GPS here. Plug this connector in. Yeah, because we're going to be doing one second, one second, not uh, 10 megahertz. I flip this to the one second position, and we will plug this time base in here. Bear in mind that the, as I said, the power is not connected, it's just getting the timing signal. And now you see that it's going um, four seconds on and four seconds off. But for this I'm going to reset the counter in its um, custom time base mode. So I'll hold this button down and press the reset. and it starts up in custom time base. Let go of the button and it will continue its startup. Now in custom time base mode it has a calibration constant which you can tune. And I tuned this yesterday so it may be pretty close to frequency. I don't know. I, I can't I can't remember whether I left it calibrated or not. But I'll do a, do a measurement now and see what happens. And it is uh, not quite the same as it was with the GPS. It's actually 1.75 hertz low, uh, lower than uh, than uh, the GPS uh, measurement, which is which is exact and correct. So. If I want to f try to tweak this calibration, I can push this button and hold it for a minute, uh, not a minute, but a second, and I'm in calibration mode. And now, um, well, um, 2 uh, hertz 
would would be um, eight um, two hertz would be eight count over four seconds, but two hertz at uh, well that's well that's close enough. I mean we're talking seven megahertz and not ten megahertz. But anyway, I'm just going to pretend that's uh, what we want and and go down two here and then skip a digit and go up one. And we'll see what happens. This, I may have completely mis misdone it, but we'll see what happens. We save that calibration. And uh, now we're ready to take another measurement. And we're dead on. 7039994. Which is which is really kind of crazy because you wouldn't use you wouldn't use this sort of oscillator for measuring anything, but um, I, I'm using it in in, in this demonstration stri strictly to show how calibration works in the frequency counter. In that you can have you could have a stable oscillator. This one is not stable, but you can have a stable oscillator that is not dead on frequency and um, use that as a time base by uh, setting the calibration constant so that the arithmetic that the MPU performs will correct for whatever the discrepancy in frequency is as long as it's stable. Um, so that's just a, a, a for demonstration purposes. Well I think I think we've covered the main the main points. I, I could uh, show higher frequencies and so on, but that's that's not necessary. So I'm going to let it go at that. I think uh, it should be pretty clear. Thank you.